Hey guys, good morning. We are now at Lake Claiborne in northern Louisiana. We were going to go ahead and go to Fountain Blue again, but because of the tornado problems and all the water, uh, I had gotten a hold of a friend of mine, Brad, BC Truck, and there's about four state parks in northern Louisiana, and this is one of them. And I asked him which one he thought was the best to stay at. And he said by far this was the best one and he's absolutely correct we are here now today uh, it is Tuesday morning we've been here since last Thursday I believe it was the weekend was pretty full people were everywhere but right now there's only one other camper and he's right across the street from me or uh, down a little bit and uh, peaceful quiet a little cool this morning <laughs> it was 36 when i woke up but that front came through yesterday but it's supposed to be up to 77 by this weekend so what i'm going to do this uh today is i'm going to make some ribs for the girls and i know you guys have seen uh, me do this before uh, i was going to do it with regular uh, firewood and i did scavenge some firewood that's what i've been doing we're not guys we're not doing the boating and seeing all the attractions we're trying to do everything we can to do it for the least amount of money we have to spend. And firewood in this area, let me spin this around so you can see this. Firewood here, like this firewood, if you buy it in bundles, it's about $6 a bundle and you might get five or six pieces. And I wasn't about to do that. You can pick up all the firewood that's on the ground that's dead wood that you want, and there's lots of it here, let me tell you. Uh, but it just burns so quick. You know, you just it just burns up too fast. So after everybody left, I mean, we had about 60 people here. There was a group of uh, Boy Scouts over there, about 30 Boy Scouts, and they were chopping on a tree that had fell over. And the tree hasn't been down very long, so the wood was really not cured very well. So it was good wood, and they cut up a bunch of it with axes. So after everybody left on Sunday, Sunday afternoon, I got my truck and I drove around this entire <laughs> campgrounds this whole state park and I picked up firewood and I'll show you a few clips of that of what, what I did get so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the fire I'm going to use charcoal this time you may be wondering why there's this sticking out well I do that intentionally uh, as you can tell my Dutch oven has a really nice patina it looks really good on the inside we always coat it with lard now you can use Crisco your hard Crisco uh, but I use, use lard when I do it. And I put this in there, and that way it has a crack in it and allows air to travel so that if any moisture was to build up in here, it wouldn't rust my cast iron. Really with these items here is all I need to do my cooking. This is called a trivet. Now it can be used for several things. One being that if you do not have a, a Dutch oven with the legs on it, and you'll find a lot of them in flea markets, and what happened was, years ago, there was lots of people that used these, and I'm talking many years ago. And when the stoves started coming around and people loved their Dutch ovens, they would actually take and cut the legs off so they could set it on their stove, because it's kind of hard to do if you've, you know, if you're not using a wood stove, it's hard to use one of these on a regular gas stove. So you'll find a lot of them. You can flip them over and see the legs have been cut off. But if they have been cut off, get you one of these. You can use this. You can actually take a regular, what they call a, uh, what is it called, a chicken chicken roaster or something like that it's, it's cast iron with no legs and then you can just set this down in top of your uh, charcoals and actually set that other cast iron pot on top of this if you want to or if you want to you can set it here put your charcoal around and set another cast iron pot on top of that our dutch oven and that way it is separated off to where you can stack these you'd have coals underneath you'd have coals on here you'd have another dutch oven or a cast iron pot with a lid on it sitting here and then you'd have you know coals on top of that so you're cooking all the way through so let's say that maybe you want to do ribs and then you want a smaller one and you're going to do baked beans or something like that you could do that now what do i use this for well i don't use it for a trivet because mine's got legs on it so let me see if i can move this over a little bit so what i do is as it's cooking, this is a lid lifter, or you can actually lift the whole thing off the fire like this, because you do not want to touch this thing when it's on the fire, but I use it for the lid. It hooks in like so, they make different kinds, and then when I take it off, and let's say that I want to do something with the items inside, well, I can't set this lid down on the ground and get it dirty, so I set it on top of the trivet, like so. 
All right, let's say that I get up in the morning and I want to cook some eggs, fry some eggs at the camp. Well, what I can do is I can take the trivet, turn it over like this so that the handle will not hit, flip this over like this, set it on charcoals. I can cook bacon. <laughs> There you go, Brad, bacon. And I can also cook eggs on this thing. It, it, it's, it's so versatile that you can do all kinds of things with this cast iron. Well, okay, guys, this is what I ended up with. Nice baked potatoes with some onion. Let's see how they are. Mmm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Hot. <laughs> squash, butter, salt, and pepper. Mmm. Oh, yeah. Mmm. The puppies are going to love these bones. Thanks for watching, guys.